So uh, I've been asked to speak on ischemic mitral regurgitation, revascularize only, repair or replace. Ischemic mitral regurgitation, as we all know, is uh, a disease of the left ventricle. It occurs following myocardial infarction, typically involving the um, posterior or inferior wall, causing LV dysfunction and dilatation and papillary muscle displacement, apically and laterally. It can also occur in a more global setting if there's an anterior myocardial infarct. The resulting lesion is that of a, a Carpentier type 3B leaflet motion restriction during systole. So this is an example of a patient with ischemic mitral regurgitation. He's a 51-year-old gentleman uh, who was in NYHA class 3. He had a pre previous inferior myocardial infarction, three vessel coronary artery disease, and grade D severe ischemic mitral regurgitation from a non viable inferior LV wall. You can see this large infarct here in the inferior wall and this corresponding area of the LV which is not thickening, uh, corresponding to this inferior lateral wall, which is resulting in tethering of this posterior leaflet and uh, significant mitral regurgitation. Um, as we know, medical treatment in this patient does have an adverse uh, outcome. You can see in this uh, cohort study of 1,200 patients admitted with myocardial infarction, 46% at functional ischemic MR. The green line showed no mitral regurgitation, the red line showed mild mitral regurgitation, and the blue line is moderate or severe uh, MR. And this is the cumulative probability of death. You can see that even in mild MR, the probability of death is twice that uh, compared to no MR at five years. And this is significantly greater in moderate or more MR. And we see the same results with probability of heart failure. Even mild MR results in two to three times the increased probability of hospital admissions for heart failure. And uh, significantly more if the MR is moderate or severe. So the aims of any intervention in ischemic MR are twofold. Firstly, to improve their survival, and secondly, to improve their symptoms. And this can be achieved through reducing the mitral regurgitation severity and also promoting reverse LV remodeling. But ischemic MR is a heterogeneous condition. There are various varying uh, degrees of severity from mild, moderate to severe to the severe plus MR, different degrees of leaflet tethering, different degrees of LV viability, varying LV size and LV function. And so a tailored approach is needed uh, to, to each individual patient. The AHA ACC has come up with this new classification for uh, mitral regurgitation. And this is the table for secondary MR published last year, in which they have graded uh, ischemic MR into four grades, A, B, C, D, uh, according to not only the severity of the MR, but also taking into consideration LV dilatation, L, uh, leaflet tethering indices, and other associated cardiac findings and symptoms. Of note, as uh, Dr. Sarano has said, the threshold for severity for severe ischemic MR has been lowered to an ERO of above 0.2 uh, centimeter square as compared to 0.4 in degenerative MR. And similarly, the regurgitant volumes of above 30 and the regurgitant fraction of above 50%. So let's take the uh, first group, the grade A, those at risk of MR, who have either no MR uh, or some MR, but very little, uh, so that the vena contract is less than 0.3. Uh, leaflets are normal and there's no uh, leaflet tethering and the LV is only mildly dilated at most. The patient may have symptoms, but these patients almost uh, certainly uh, do not need any uh, intervention on the mitral valve. They need optimal medical treatment and coronary artery revascularization if appropriate. Uh, these patients, as we can see from this, space, from this study with one plus MR, the vast majority of them uh, stay mild, uh, as mild MR or even improve to none. Uh, this, this is uh, uh, only 12% progress to three or four plus MR. So 88% of these patients with mild MR 
uh, do very well with just uh, revascularization. But it is not a benign condition, and these patients still have an adverse outcome, as you can see in this graph. Uh, mild MR was an independent predictor of reduced survival at five years following CABG. But this may not be uh, because of the MR, it may be just a reflection of the poorer LV function in these patients. So the next group of patients, those with grade B MR or progressive MR, so they have more MR, which you can uh, quantify by PISA, but the ERO is less than 0.2, regurgitant volume less than 30, regurgitant fraction less than 50%. There is some leaflet tattering, but this is mild, and there's some annular dilatation uh, and some uh, LV wall motion abnormalities. So in these patients, um, that, uh, as in the previous group, they need to have optimal medical treatment and coronary revascularization. If the LV is all viable, it's likely to recover with, mitral, uh, with coronary revascularization, so no intervention is needed on the mitral valve. But if there's significant non-viable LV segments, then mitral valve repair should be considered. These are the, this is the results of the CTS network moderate MR trial. Uh, a randomized trial between uh, CABG alone versus CABG uh, plus mitral valve repair. Uh, and as you can see, the primary outcome of LV and systolic volume index at one year, there was no significant uh, difference between the two groups. Of note, all of these patients started with 2 plus MR, but at one year, only 30% had 2 plus MR. So 70% of these patients improve in terms of MR severity with just coronary artery revascularization. Of note also, 11% uh, uh, recurrent MR at one year, which uh, is perhaps uh, significant. Uh, not surprisingly, when you look at the uh, cardiac uh, events, cardiac cerebral vascular events, there was no difference between the two groups and the survival curves were also similar between uh, the two uh, groups. So coming to the third uh, group of patients, the grade, three, the grade C and D, a severe MR, an ERO of above 0.2, a regurgitant, regurgitant volume above 30 mils, regurgitant fraction above 50%, either asymptomatic or symptomatic. And these are patients also with uh, more significant tattering of the leaflet and annular dilatation with loss of uh, co-optation of the mitral leaflets. Uh, so this is an example of such a patient, the 65-year-old man. He was in NYHA class 3. He also had angina exertion, three-vessel coronary artery disease. He had great D, severe ischemic MR. The ERO was 0.22 and moderate uh, LV systolic function. You can see the MR jet here, uh, which is perhaps not too severe if you compare that to degenerative disease and also the significant leaflet tattering here. So uh, this this group of patients need some intervention, and if we are to repair the mitral valve, we know the principles taught to us by Carpentier and uh, Dion. Uh, we have to revascularize the, com the arteries completely, use a complete rigid or semi-rigid ring, not flexible bands, and undersize this by two sizes to achieve a co-optation length of at least five to nine millimeters between the anterior and posterior leaflet, and to leave the operating theater with no more than trace MR at the end of the operation. Uh, so this is what this patient had. You can see the ring has been implanted. This is one year after the uh, he had four CABG grafts and a mitral anoplasty. He was well and in NOHA class one. So this was a randomized controlled trial we uh, first presented here three years ago at this meeting, the randomized ischemic mitral evaluation trial, the RIME trial. Uh, comparing CABG alone with or without mitral valve annuloplasty in moderate functional ischemic MR. We started this trial with in moderate functional ischemic MR, but as we heard, the, uh, with the reclassification of MR severity, the patients included in this trial can be considered as having severe MR because the ERO was at the lower end of that, but the regurgitant volume was well within the range of uh, uh, severe uh, in the new guidelines. So in this study, you can see here uh, with the mitral valve repair, in addition to CABG, these patients uh, did a lot better compared to those who just had CABG in terms of their 
peak oxygen consumption, which was the primary outcome of this study, a 22% increase in the mitral valve repair group compared to a non-significant 5% change. And similarly, LV volumes reduced by a significant 28% in this group compared to a non-significant 6% uh, in the CABG group. Uh, MR volumes uh, reduced a lot more in the repair group compared to CABG. And those who had uh, the repair, 74% uh, um, uh, at no MR, 22% MR. The incidence of recurrent MR was only 4% in this study as compared to those who just had revascularization, as you can see, most of them continued to have moderate uh, MR. And BMP levels reduced more uh, in the MR group as well. And these patients also felt better. As you can see, the, mean, uh, the median NYHA class was class 1 in those who had the valve repair as compared to class 2 in those who had the CABG. So the, uh, the tethering uh, indices in this group of patients was 7.7 .7 millimeters. So it was not, it was tethered, but it was not significantly, not severely so. And 75% of these patients had non valve myocardium, predominantly in the inferior lateral wall. This was accessed by cardiac MRI. So uh, in, this patient, in this group of patients, um, almost certainly they need medical treatment plus CABG, and they do very well with uh, mitral valve annuloplasty. Coming to the last group of patients, what we call the severe plus MR, these are the group of patients uh, with an ERO of above 0.4, a very severe MR for ischemic MR, or tethering indices of greater than one. Uh, that, there's this, that this group of patients with ER of 0.4 really is different from this group with an ER of 0.2, 0.4, although both groups are classified as having severe MR under the new classification. So in this group of patients, they don't do so well with just a mitral annuloplasty, and some intervention is needed on the subvalvular apparatus if we are repairing the valve, or alternatively, a valve replacement may be the best option in these patients. And this is the CTS network severe MR trial. These are the one-year results. This was the randomized trial comparing repair versus replacement in severe ischemic MR, uh, all with an ER of above 0.4. Uh, you can see uh, in terms of LV volume reduction, no difference between the two groups, but a very significant 33% recurrence rate of uh, moderate or more MR in the repair group compared to 2% in the replacement group. Of note, there was a subgroup uh, who had no recurrent MR with repair in this group of patients, and this did very well. We see the, the LV volumes reduced by 22%, similar to that in the RIME trial, uh, compared to the other indices. Uh, so these are their survival curve at one year. No difference between the two groups, but I put it to you that although um, statistically P is 0 0.45, there's no difference between the two groups. But you, you can see that these two curves are clearly different. They are not the same. Uh, and this study is not power to detect differences in survival. And if it was a larger study, we may find a difference in p-value between the two groups of patients. Uh, so uh, these are the two-year results which have just been presented an hour ago. Uh, very similar to their one-year results. You can see no difference in LV volumes between the two groups. 36% recurrence rate of MR in the repair group compared to 1% in the replacement group. And also in this group of patients who had no recurrence, a very good reverse LV remodeling of 23%. So if we compare all the three trials, I think one message comes out strongly that if we are to repair this uh, dual mitral repair in ischemic MR, we have to uh, ensure a good durable repair. Uh, and if you did that, you can see the consistent results here in, this, in the CTS network trial, a 22% reduction in LV volumes. In the RIME trial, a 28% reduction in LV volumes. Uh, several predictors of recurrent MR following mitral annuloplasty have been identified. And I'm not going to present each of these studies, but this is summarized very nicely in the European guidelines from 2012. Basically, there are two indices, tethering indices, with a co-optation length above one centimeter, or LV dilatation. Uh, the most easy to measure is an end dusted diameter above 65 millimeters. So what do the guidelines tell us? Unfortunately, the guidelines, although just published last year, were published before the CTS network trials uh, were reported, so do not include the CTS network trial. It has included the RIME trial, reference 458, they put it here, 
and it says mitral surgery may be considered for severely symptomatic patients with chronic severe secondary MR. So they've classified patients in the RIME trial as having severe MR. And uh, mitral valve repair may be considered for patients with chronic moderate secondary MR, stage B, who are undergoing other cardiac surgery. And if they're undergoing CABG or AVR, it is reasonable if there's chronic severe secondary MR. So uh, just, just the very last slide. Uh, um, to summarize all, um, everything which has been presented the last 10 minutes. So the group A at risk of MR, coronary revascularization alone. Grade B, progressive MR, but all LV is viable, coronary revascularization alone. But if there's areas of non-viable LV, consider mitral endoplasty plus CAVG. Uh, grade C and D, severe MR, if the tethering distance is less than one centimeter, no significant tethering, and the LV and diastolic diameter is less than 65, Mitral endoplasty and CABG gives a very good result. Uh, however, if there's significant tethering above one centimeter or endoscopic diameter above 65 millimeters, then mitral valve replacement is probably the best option or alternatively uh, subvalvular procedure in addition to mitral endoplasty. So I'd just like to conclude, uh, ischemic MR is a heterogeneous condition. The severity of MR, mitral valve leaflet tethering, LV viability, LV size, and LV function determine the outcome. A tailored approach is needed in managing ischemic MR. Mitral valve surgery is indicated in grade C and D, severe ischemic mitral regurgitation. Results are best if a durable mitral valve repair can be achieved. Thank you to the association for the invitation to speak today. Thank you very much. John, will you allow me to refer a patient? So I have this 75 years old man who blocked his right coronary artery before the era of primary PCI and even thrombolysis and he was asymptomatic now, but now he's very short of breath. He needs bypass and he also needs the mitral valve surgery, but I don't know what, repair or replacement. The posterior wall is all an aneurysm and there is calcium invading the posterior leaflet and the subvalvular apparatus of the posterior leaflet. So there is not only asymmetric tethering, but there is calcium involved in the posterior leaflet and the subvalvular apparatus. So is that repair or replacement? <laughs> Thank you. It's a difficult question. Strictly speaking, this is not a uh, function ischemic MR because of the calcification. Yes. Uh, so I, I guess uh, then one would have to judge technically at the time of surgery with this calcification, which is the more feasible option. But if you can, probably a replacement may be better in this, in this patient. Yeah. So the message we want to pass now is that there is functional uh, ischemic MR, secondary MR, there is also organic. So when the leaflets and the subvalvular apparatus are involved, that's organic MR. Yeah. Oh, qu quick question. You, you, the discordance between the RIME trial and, and the, the trial done by the network, you know, the, the, the RIME trial was done by people who were very motivated to repair the mitral valve. The number of cases done by each center in the uh, NIH network was very limited. What's your view on what explains the, the difference of results between the two, the two studies? Is the experience of the surgeon something that may explain the difference? Uh, thank you, Dr. Serrano, for the question. I, I'm confident of the, uh, the, the real valve repair surgeons in the RIME trial because they were all experienced mitral repair surgeons. Uh, but I can't uh, comment on the CTS network trial. But I think there are certainly different groups of patients. I mean, the RIME trial is very careful in assessing LV viability and all patients at cardiac MRI. Unfortunately, this is lacking in the uh, CTS network trial. I suspect that looking at the results where the vast majority of those who are just at CABG improve with just revascularization, that they have very little non-viable myocardium, that most of them were hibernating myocardium so, and recovered with just uh, revascularization. I think there are two distinct groups of patients, uh, perhaps difference in surgic surgeons as well, but I think uh, the, the, the selection in, of the, the patients are clearly different in the two, two studies. Very quick, one last question. Yeah. Um, the question is, um, when you have sort of multifactorial etiology, there is ischemic uh, MR, but people also have atrial fibrillation with significant annular dilation. Um, how do you sort of take that into account when you make your uh, decision? People have multifactorial sort of, there is annular dilation with longstanding atrial fibrillation, and there is also associated ischemic MR and some calcium in the annulus. So if you put all these together, how much of this is going to be actually rectified by your traditional uh, repair. 
Yes, uh, absolutely. Uh, ischemic MR is quite heterogeneous, and I, I think to uh, we, we are understanding a lot more about this condition with the trials which are reporting. Uh, and it has to be individualized to each patient. It may be that some patients need more than just uh, a valve repair. So the AF patients will probably almost certainly need the AF ablation as well. As we look carefully at each of these trials, I, I think uh, to, to just randomize patients based on severity was perhaps a bit too ambitious in, in, this, in these trials. Yeah.